morning, church. I want to take just a brief opportunity and and say thank you for the text, the phone calls, and most importantly, the prayers for my dad. Um, he is doing very well. He's in a lot of pain, um, but he's in good spirits. I just left Memphis today and drove back this afternoon, so uh, thank you so much for those prayers. When I say the word slump, what sport comes to mind? Oh, I heard some baseballs. America's sport, baseball. Baseball is a game of ups and downs. Um, one sport that I wish when I was in college that 30% was good. In baseball, 30% batting average is pretty good. When you're batting 300 in the major leagues, you're probably making millions and millions of dollars. Baseball players experience the full spectrum of emotional highs and lows. Take, for instance, one of the worst batting slumps in Major League Baseball history, and I actually think that just here recently this record has been broke by some, I can't remember the guy's name, I think his last name is Davis, his place for the Baltimore Orioles. But take, for instance, one of the worst batting slumps in Major League Baseball history. Craig Council went 0 for 45 in 2011. That tied the longest non-hit streak in Major League Baseball history. Some reports have Bill Bergen going 0 for 46 in 1909. Well, they really didn't keep real good stats in 1909, so they backed that up and they said he's tied with Craig Council at 0 for 45. Here's some other details about Major League Baseball players, and these are some more common names. Aaron Judge plays for the New York Yankees. He batted 130 and 77 at bats. One of the greatest hitters of to, in today's game, anyway. He batted 130 and 77 at bats. Yadier Molina, St. Louis Cardinals. I've got to tell you, I'm a Cardinal fan. I'm a Cardinal fan, but he went 146 and 85 at bats. Ozzy Smith, another Cardinal. I can't believe I put this many Cardinals on here being a Cardinal fan. Ozzy Smith, 136 and 146 at bats. David Ortiz, otherwise known as Big Poppy, 140 and 111 at bats. Derek Jeter, 168 and 108 at bats. The list goes on and on and on. And I told you I was a St. Louis Cardinal fan, and I, I don't know why I listed these Cardinals here in these slumps that they were in. I could have listed the entire Chicago Cubs roster from 1945 to 2016. I'm sorry, Cub fans. I couldn't help myself. It's, you know, slumps can happen. Slumps happen to the best of players. And here's one that's real interesting. In 1971, Luis Aparicio went 0 for 44. But listen to this. He still got elected into the Baseball Hall of Fame. He had a slump of 0 for 44 and still got elected in the Baseball Hall of Fame. When baseball players get in these slumps, they are often told by their coaches to go back to the basics. They're often told to go put a baseball back on a tee. The same tee that four-year-olds hit off of. When baseball players get in these slumps, they're told to go back. Go back to the fundamentals. Go back to the fundamentals. Have you ever found yourself in a spiritual slump? I have. I have. Turn with me to Revelation.
Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. I'm going to re be reading verses 4 and 5. Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. Consider how far you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. Our lesson from God's Word tonight will focus on how we as Christians can get out of a spiritual slump. And more importantly, stay out of the crippling grip it can have on us. And I may be talking about something that doesn't happen to anybody else in this room. I'm just telling you at times, I get in a spiritual slump. Interesting to me, in these verses out of the book of Revelation, it says, you have forsaken the love you had at first. So the terminology, the terminology at first seems to be pointing us in the direction of when I became a Christian, when I became a child of God, when I obeyed the plan of salvation as outlined in the Bible. You have forsaken the love you had at first. If I'm in a spiritual slump, have I lost the love I had at first? The verse goes on to say, consider how far you have fallen. This is telling me I need to really do some honest soul searching. Sometimes the hardest thing for me to do is for me to be totally honest with Trey. It's sometimes very difficult to remove the beam out of my own eye. Can I be honest enough with myself to recognize that I'm not doing the things I am required to do as a Christian? that has probably placed me in this spiritual slump that I can be in. I'm then told in these verses, repent and do the things you did at first. Notice how many times in these verses it says, at first. It says here, repent and do the things you did at first. Now I'm told that I can get out of this spiritual slump. Praise God for His grace and mercy. Praise God for His grace and mercy. But I have to do something. I have to repent and do the things I did at first. These verses don't necessarily tell me what I did at first when I became a child of God. So it's going to take, like I said, it's going to take rigorous honesty on my part to know what to do to get out of this spiritual slump. I'm going to have to do a lot of soul searching. I'm going to have to pray earnestly. I'm going to have to seek counsel of the wise sometimes and seeking God's word daily. If you think about the people mentioned in the Bible, how many could we name that could have been classified as being in a spiritual slump? You start out in the beginning, Adam. You think you could classify Adam and Eve as being in a spiritual slump when they recognized that they were naked in the sight of God? I think so. Solomon, Abraham, Sarah, Noah, Peter. Was Peter in a spiritual slump? I, I, I would think he was. Uh, when he actually denied Christ three times. What about David? A man after God's own heart. 
Psalm 51, one of my favorite books of the Bible. It gives me great hope when I find myself in a spiritual slump. Turn with me there if you don't mind. Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you may be justified in your words and blameless in your judgment. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, your delight in truth in the inward being, and you teach me wisdom in the secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have broken rejoice. Hide your, fra- hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Verse 10, I love this. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. I'm not going to finish the entire entire chapter, but verse 10, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. When I'm in a spiritual slump, I've got to know that there's a way out. I've got to know that there's a way out. I truly think we can go to one passage in the Bible that tells us specifically what to do when faced with being in a spiritual slump. I personally like the King James Version here. Um, 1 Peter 2.2, you don't have to turn there, you all know it. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Folks, I was teaching the young adult class last Tuesday night, and I wish I had one of those aerosol horns to blow. There's a command here. There's a command here in 1 Peter 2, 2. It says, as newborn babes desire. That's a command. Desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. This verse tells me that it is very possible that I may have lost my desire. That may be the whole reason I'm in a spiritual slump. I may have lost my desire for God's Word. I may have lost my desire uh, for the love of God's Word. Or do I feel like I don't need to grow anymore? Or have I become arrogant in my walk with Christ? As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Matthew 18, 2 through 5 says, In calling to him a child, he put him in the midst of them and said, Truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like a child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word. Tonight, if you're in a spiritual slump like I've found myself to be at times in my life, I ask you to simply do this. Put the ball back on the tee. Put the ball back on the tee tee and simply get back to the basics, the fundamentals of your Christian walk. 
as you did on the day you became a child of God. A, sl a slump only lasts a lifetime if we allow it to. My hope and prayer tonight is that we as Christians recognize that a spiritual slump can happen to any of us. Major League Baseball players, as I mentioned earlier, they're masters of their craft. Yet they fall victim to a much lesser form of a slump. Getting back to the basics of our Christian walk is not a sign of weakness. Let me say that again. Getting back to the basics of our Christian walk, desiring the sincere milk of the Word as newborn babes, is not a sign of weakness. We sometimes simply just need the milk to wash down the meat. Thank you, Trey. Let's sing one more song before we're dismissed by prayer. If you would, please join me in standing as we sing How Great Is Our God. <clears throat> the splendor of